This image was taken with a DSLR camera with a 35mm focal length lens. Here we can see Jupiter, the Pleiades, and the California Nebula. We're going to calculate the astrometric solution of the image. As this image doesn't have metadata with the coordinates of the center, we need to set the approximate coordinates manually. The focal distance is 35 millimeters and the pixel size is 5.4 microns. In an image with a field as wide as this, enabling distortion correction is essential. But to see the image's distortion, first we're going to find the astrometric solution without distortion correction. If we use Annotate Image to annotate the bright stars, for example, we can see that there is a lot of distortion in the corners. This shows how important it is to enable distortion correction in this type of image. We're also going to check the Show Distortion Map option. The map shows how much distortion there is toward the corners of the image. If we annotate the image again with the same catalog, we can see that the stars are positioned where they should be. This image contains Jupiter, so we're going to configure Annotate Image so that it labels the planets as well as the objects in the Messier catalog. To do this, we need the correct date and time and, if possible, the top eccentric coordinates, too. Now that we've annotated the planets, we can see that Uranus is visible in this image too. The ecliptic, therefore, runs in this direction. As the ecliptic runs across the image, there are probably a lot of asteroids too. So let's annotate the asteroids in the first XF file we've downloaded. To do this, we add a custom XF file and select the first one. To see where the asteroids are, we simply mark them, but we don't set a limit magnitude. Now that we've annotated the asteroids, we can clearly see that they are clustered around the ecliptic. This includes many objects that are not even visible in the image because it doesn't have the necessary depth. However, we can annotate the visible ones, the 343 main asteroids, and set a limit magnitude of 15. For this to work, the observation date and time must be correct. This time we're going to label the name and magnitude too. The console tells us that, of the brightest asteroids, all of these are visible and from the XF file, all of these are visible up to a magnitude of 15. 
The main asteroids are shown in orange, and the ones in the ephemeris file are labeled in white. Here we have Vibilia with a magnitude of 11.3 and Antiope with a magnitude of 13.5. We can barely see this one. It's very weak because it's almost at the limit of the image's depth. Toward the edges of the image, the asteroids are still perfectly annotated because we've corrected the distortions very well. Even at the top of the image, where there is some astigmatism, the asteroids are still perfectly annotated because the astrometric solution is calculated based on a PSF model of each star to calculate their respective centroids. In this image, if we adjust the time by just one hour, the asteroid labels will shift out of position. This is because the ephemeris calculation will give the position of the objects one hour before the time the image was actually taken. Here we can see that Amalthea is too far up, and this one too. All of the asteroids have moved out of their annotated positions. PixInsight provides an excellent astrometric position calculation solution that adapts to any optical system, meaning that you can calculate a highly precise astrometric solution for the whole image. The ability to store complex metadata in EXIF format also helps to make this possible. Lastly, we can also draw the ecliptic. The line shows that the planets are aligned with the ecliptic. And if we add more XF files with fainter asteroids, we can see how they all pile up around the line. Thank you.